Hi, Joan. Hi. Nice to have you. So um, we're going to go back to multi-platform stuff, but right. I want to start with the conversation with the digital video GRP. Okay, great. I would love for you to talk through that from Comscore's perspective and sort of your point of view on that. Okay, great. Well, for those of you not familiar with Comscore, uh, we are we our, our tagline is um, is analytics for the digital world. And uh, so we have a long experience in measuring how consumers use the dig various digital platforms, whether it's PCs, whether it's tablets, whether it's smartphones. And now in the truly multi-platform world, you know, we're including uh, television measurement in that. And uh, most recently, we're doing a, a big uh, project with ESPN to even include radio. You know, so it's really this five platform um, measurement solutions. And the idea here is that, um, you know, when you're doing your analytics on the digital platforms, I mean, cookies don't buy products, people buy products. And so our job is to take all of the massive data that's collected from the analytics um, kind of approaches that are available out there and translate them into what actual people do. Um, so, you know, one of the um, issues that's been talked about lately in the industry is, you know, the online GRP. Right? Um, should we use a GRP to measure the digital world? And um, then, but there's really a second question there that is, um, you know, does the online GRP measure what we need it to me measure? So there's really two parts to that question. And uh, I'm going to kind of tackle the second part of it first because if the online GRP doesn't mean the same thing as the TV GRP, then they're not really going to be, you're not really going to be able to use it to compare the two media. And um, that's really one of the big challenges facing the industry. There's an initiative called the um, 3MS, Making Measurement Make Sense. Uh, the ANA, the IAB, lots of industry organizations are concerned about digital measurement and they want it to be more useful, they want it to be easier, they want it to be more understandable. And, um, and that goes to really one of the issues with an online GRP is that um, in the digital world, you, know, you need to be sure that your, um, your advertising uh, can be seen by the consumer, that the advertising isn't sort of below the fold, you know, that did the consumer scroll down? Did the ad render um, along with the, in time for the consumer's experience of that web page or that video content? So there's a lot of questions as to um, whether we can really compare. Remember, television is an opportunity to see measure. So Joe, may I, may I dissect yeah, sure. this a little yeah, bit? Because yeah. I think we're getting into some really interesting territory. So, right. so first of all, when we talk about a digital GRP, what I'm hearing, especially with the 3MS project and knowing what that is, because a lot of that was was driven by issues with display, yeah, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. And counting inventory that was never seen, was yep, below the yep, fold, et cetera, yep. right? Um, I mean, you're talking about a GRP that is broader than just online video. Right. I, I'm talking about a, okay. a GRP used for the comparison of the two platforms, no matter what the advertising type is. So could you take us through how you at the actual measurement or establishment of a GRP versus, you know, an audience rating, a traditional audience rating scale on television, like the actual granular means right. by yeah. which you would go about and measuring an audience online. Well, I mean, a GRP is a very simple metric. It's very useful and it's very uh, familiar to people. And it's um, essentially if you have a, a, a 300 GRP uh, campaign, uh, one way to think about that is you've reached 100 percent of your target audience three times. Right? And if you add digital to that platform and you achieve another 50 GRPs, you've reached 350, or you've reached 100% um, of your audience 3.5 times. Right? So it's a really convenient measure to use across media. The challenge is it doesn't really tell you what the benefits of the digital part of the campaign are. Right? So, so most marketers and their agencies are looking for specific things um, that's why they're adding digital to the campaign. You know, they're looking to reach additional people, you know, new incremental reach. But do they're, we historically, from a media perspective, define and slice and dice audiences the same for television versus digital? Uh, we don't historically do that, but I think there's some, a demand out there, especially in the online video space, as online video has grown enormously over the past, you know, few years. Um, uh, marketers really want to take advantage of it. And to make that easy, they want a baseline metric to compare television to online video. What do you think is going to be, I mean, where do you think this sort of, if, if GRP 
becomes a standard by which media is acquired and procured in digital. Is it going to be the digital guys wanting to tap into TV dollars? Is it going to be the TV guys to be able to wanting to, to mark territory in digital? Or is it going to be adver- media agencies and advertisers wanting an apples to apples ability to evaluate their investments? Where do you think the, the biggest screams are going to come? I think the biggest are coming from the advertising agencies wanting a convenient way to compare the media. Then I think that there are um, that the, the television folks want an easy way to understand what's happening in digital and TV. You know, there's still a lot of silos out operating out there. And I think digital can also benefit from the use of a GRP. But again, it doesn't tell the whole story. It doesn't tell you how much additional audience you're getting. That's a new audience that isn't going to be reached on TV. It doesn't tell you the cost effectiveness of the medium. You know, it doesn't tell you about the, uh, you know, kind of the the reach curve. Uh, right. Once your your television campaign is flattened out, you know, is that the time to add digital? The, the GRP is just not going to tell you those really crucial insights that you need about managing the campaign. And how does it address format? Like a, you know, a, a sight, sound, motion, rich media yeah. unit versus a static display, you know, 300 by 250 or a leaderboard. Like, yeah. h- how do you... How do you get there? Because you got one format on right. television, right? Because EBIF has failed, so it's right. pretty much one way. It's 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 broadcast, right? Um, well, I just want to say something. I don't think EBIF really failed, but that's another okay. entirely I, different conversation. I I, um, I, I yeah, think you're right. right. You yeah. Forgive me for <laughs> painting a broad brushstroke. But, I think um, you're right. Yeah, I mean that a very tough initiative, um, and and we do have some some useful stuff that came out of that. So that's a, a good thing. Well, you know, the the question is really equivalency. Right. Is a, a, an online video advertisement um, is, you know, according to the marketplace, um, maybe has a little higher value than a 30 second television spot because people are paying more for it in general. A banner ad may have less um, less value. You, you, you need more banner ads uh, in order to accumulate the same effect as a 30 second television spot. Um, these things are, are measurable. You know, we um, Comscore. Uh, measured this as part of a research paper for the Advertising Research Foundation, the ARF, and uh, we actually uh, won best paper for that because it was a very unique way. We said, well, what is the equivalency? How many banner ads do you need to to have the equivalent impact of a 30-second spot? You know, and those are the kinds of questions. And that probably that, varies by audience, though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm sure it does. Because yes. I would assume uh-huh. a millennial yeah. demographic probably mm-hmm. has the ability to consume more data it's also, than boomers. and yeah, Absolutely. And it's going to have an impact by the timing of the campaign. You know, we want to do more with the timing of our advertising campaigns. You know, we want to be able to, um, to achieve our goals integrating TV and online video. And right now, the systems aren't really in place that allow us to do that. So... Putting on the hat of a media agency right now, mm-hmm. right, sort of yeah. mm-hmm. one of the reasons we're here. And let's make the assumption that we have an integrated buying team through the line, right? What advice do you give them? It's <laughs> panache, I know. Okay, wow. Well, right. We really don't have that. We're, but, okay. I know, but, but let's, <laughs> let's, Actually. let's dissect the problem and make it bite-sized. So, so yeah. where do you start with multi-platform okay. measurement? I, I think we really start at the, with the planning process. Right. Okay. I, I probably would start a little bit further up the food chain there because at planning, you know, at some level, it, you are doing integrated media planning with all of the platforms and you're making your dollar al- allocations. But then when it comes to at making real choices, that's where things begin to get siloed. And in the buying process, things are very, very siloed. So, you know, I think it's realistic for us to tackle the media planning process and say, okay, once we get down to making our choices about you know, specific websites or online video properties and television programs, um, once we want to get to scenario planning, you know, let's take the campaign, let's overlay it on the multiple media, by the way, including mobile and tablet, and say, okay, well, how does that differentially deliver reach and frequency against my target audience? You know, that's where I see the first step in really integrating is at this kind of deeper level of media planning. So you're advocating media mix modeling, basically, as as in order to be able to sort of make sure that you can tackle multi Oh, no, uh, no, not at all. I mean, we've been using uh, marketing mix modeling for over a decade, two decades now. And uh, one of my uh, my clients at Kraft said, you know, we've taken marketing mix modeling about as far as it can go. 
and what the the a lot of these initiatives that are out there are about what's called single source research. That is um, exposure to media, purchase behavior, action behavior across platform captured from the same people, right? Single source research is absolutely foundational for us to figure out what to do across platforms. I mean, we have just to get sim really simplistic. Um, but this, this is what a lot of systems use. You know, we've all heard, we've probably all heard of um, random duplication. And that's a way of you mathematically joining two independent data sets. And you're really just making a guess as to what that duplicated audience is. The only way to truly discover what the duplication is between two media assets, whether it's a TV show, an online video, an advertising campaign, is to measure it at some, uh, some level as a single source. And that is something that that Comscore is um, is really embracing. Is not only single source from a from a consumer panel point of view, but a single source from a census data point of view, where we're making observations in the data that that create single source um, platforms that comprise millions of households and mm -hmm. millions of people, not just 10,000 or 20,000 or 30,000 people. And believe me, to measure the digital platforms, you need census level data. I mean, when, when we look at our research, Comscore has a panel of a million consumers in the US and another million outside the US, and that's not big enough to measure the digital world. So on top of that, we lay in what's called, um, what we refer to as census-based data, and that's where our clients incorporate a Comscore tag in their websites and their online videos, and that gives us the census of what's going on. So it's really a combination of those two methods that gets you to um, you know, adequate measurement in the digital space, excellent measurement uh, in the dig digital space.